Welcome back to Developers Home and today we are discussing about Spark ETL and in a Spark ETL we'll be discussing about Spark ETL with Lakehouse and in Lakehouse we'll be doing that Spark ETL with Delta Lake. In earlier video we have done Spark ETL with APIs and till now we have considered different data sources for doing Spark ETL. You see in this diagram that we have done this with different data sources and now today we are adding one more which is Delta Lake. So before going to Delta Lake we'll first understand what is Lakehouse because that is very essential to do ETL. So now you know that we have all heard about data warehouse, we have all heard about data lake, but what is lake house? So lake house is actually a combination of data lake plus data warehouse. We know that data warehouse is very efficient for doing data engineering and it's very efficient for doing analytics and data science and to write machine learning algorithms and for data optimization, for those all operations, data warehouse is very well known. Okay, we can store like uh, millions and billions amount of data into data warehouse and we can do efficiently analytics on top of that. Where data lake, which is you know that very efficient in storing raw format data and very good thing is like it's very cost effective and we can scale it. So you know that both is having their advantages while lake house is a combination of both. Lakehouse is using underlying structure of data lake so we can store data into raw format but still we'll get this all the performance and we can do all the analysis and all the uh, optimization same way as data warehouse. So this is like combination of both and we are getting benefits from both side. So on a high level you know that if you see so it's like using architecture of data lake storage so we can store data into raw format and we can store massive amount of data with very low cost schema on read so you know that normally when we store data into row format we don't have any particular schema but here on top of that it provides that framework that we can also have schema on each type of data it's a scale scalable and we can still do analytics and you know that uh, it's a very cost efficient so this is how you know that basic understanding of lake house is so now if we understand what are the popular formats of lake house like in which format we store data into lake house so delta lake is very famous format apache iceberg and apache hoodie is also very well known formats and mostly databricks is using delta lake but snowflake and all other you know that companies they are also using apache iceberg and apache hoodie so you know that now first we'll understand about delta lake in a next video and blog we'll be doing same with apache iceberg and apache hoodie but today we are considering delta lake so now if you go to delta lake so basically delta lake is an open source storage layer that provides a reliability performance and data management feature for this big data workloads and it actually provides asset transactions versioning schema informants and time travel capability and all other features you know that we are storing data into row format but on top of that we are getting asset property you can also do versioning you can also create indexing in terms of like a z order we can also do partitioning so we consider those table as a uh, sql tables but still we are storing data into row format so that's what delta lake is so now you know that what we'll do is for our practical example we'll consider one ETL practical example with delta tables and what we'll do is we'll take data from MySQL we'll load some sample data into MySQL using Spark we read data from MySQL and then we do some filtering we do data transformation in a Spark and then load data into delta format and we understand that how this data is stored into delta format and then from Apache Spark again we read, read that delta tables and will again write different Spark SQL. So we understand that how data insert and data write happen on Spark with help of delta. So now first thing is if you go to a MySQL workbench and in that MySQL workbench I have provided this CSV file and in that CSV file we have sample data of different kinds of food and which is having scientific name and then group and subgroup so what we can do is like we can use import wizard and you can upload this data into MySQL I have already done that and now I have generic food as a table 
stored in MySQL, which is like data engineering schema. So now first thing is we'll create connection with MySQL and load this data into Spark data frame. So now if I go again back to Jupyter Lab notebook, so first thing is I will start this Spark session and Spark application. So here I need to connect MySQL and that's why I'm specifying that I need this external package because I am connecting to MySQL. So we'll be also dealing with Delta. So we'll be also require Delta packages, but, but with our Spark instance, we have already packages installed for Delta. So no need to specify Delta here and it will by default consider that. So if I execute this one, so this is actually, you know, that checking that do I have that uh, external packages available for MySQL or not. If yes, it will not download. And then if no, it will download and then install. So in my case, it's already there. So it's just showing that three packages and through two artifacts are required and which is already available there. So now our first thing is create connection. So I'm creating connection with my local host which is my local MySQL data engineering is my database and generic food is my table. So now I'm executing this and this will load data from table to this data frame. We have this Spark session running on localhost 4040. So if in case if you want to check that, we can also go and check from there that what's actually happening here. OK, so now it's at initial stage. It's just creating connection. And now if I do print schema, it will show that what kind of data format I have. Next thing is I will just showcase top 10 rows. So I'll be getting no that data is properly loaded. And now I have this data available which shows that food name, scientific name, group and subgroup. So next thing is we'll create how temporary view so that we can write Spark SQL. So now I'm creating here have temporary view and that is also available now. So now I am writing this Spark SQL, just getting top 20 data from this table. So I have that also available. So now we'll be not directly storing data into Delta format, but first we analyze this data and we'll see that what kinds of food we have. So I am just doing group and then saying that I need all the different groups of food count and uh, I want to display that in a descending order. So I have written query for that. And now I see that this query is executing and this is taking a little bit of time. And here I have this number of foods with group. So we have herbs as a highest and second highest is a fruit. So what we will do is for a first instance, we'll filter this data with herbs and spices and then load that into Delta format. And in a second instance, we'll load a fruits data just to understand, you know, that first it will create table and then second, it will just append data. So I will creating one data frame, which is having only data filter with herbs and spice. So now I have that data frame available, just checking how many rows I have. So I have around 52 rows. And now here earlier we have used write dot format. And earlier we have used CSV, JSON, Parquet, ORC, Avro, but now we are using Delta here. And we are saying that create table with name on-prem warehouse and mode is append. So if there is already available, it will just append. So and if, if not, it will create an append. So this is basically creating table and storing data into that. So this process is still executing. If I go here and check, so I can sti still see that uh, running job. So this is now completed, but it was earlier running. So now this is still running. So it should be showing here in a, a running job. So this is chapter one. So I am at uh, correct chapter. Yeah, good. And now this is completed. So now if I go into this on-prem warehouse folder, I see that I have one parquet file and I have one delta log folder and that I have this JSON file. So basically, you know that the delta file is not directly dot delta format, same as like dot JSON dot CSV, but delta files are combination of parquet files plus JSON file. So parquet files, 
they are storing actual data which we are inserting and here json file which are storing all the properties like you know that what kind of operation are done what is the file size is there a partition is there a append operation or you know that is there any index created or is there you know that uh, different kinds of details are stored here so if in case you want to check that i will just open this with editor so here we will see that this is version one then all the metadata what is the format and then you know that uh, name of the all the columns with that data type so basically this schema is stored here is there any partition and then when this is created and in which uh, file this data is stored modification time size so these are the all details metadata are stored in json file so basically json plus parquet which is creating here delta files so now we have table created and data is also loaded now so now what we will do is will load data one more time so i am just filtering with fruits and now appending that data second time so now it should will uh, it should create one more file for parquet and one more file in json json will store all the properties that this is now version number two and these are the data with this format is stored so now if you go inside we'll have now two parquet files like first one is having older data second one is having newer data and now you know that here if we go it will show that second json file which is having all the properties for second file so now you know that when we do and read this a delta table it will combine all the properties and it will combine all the data and we'll see that combination of data at once and here you know that one of the advantage is if you want to check data based on version so you know that we can also say that i want to read this table at version 1 at version 2 at version 3 or i always want to see a latest version so when we do select star from it will be always giving latest version which is a combination of all the data if there is update happen delete happen whatever whatever latest data is there it will display that latest data will be not doing versioning or you know that uh, time travel uh, now it will be uh, will be doing that in a separate block today will be just doing etl here so now we have that file is also created now what we will do is we'll read this data again and we'll do select query so now you know that earlier we have used park.read.format with json csv avro parky same way we'll be doing delta so when we use delta it will go into that folder and it will, it will check is there log files are available or is there parky files are available then only it will be identified that as a delta table so now we'll first read this table so if i execute this and now if i print this schema so now it will go to this json file it will read that schema and it will print from that to here and now if i execute this dot show it will go it will combine this all data and display it here so now if in same way you know that our next step is we'll create hive table so that we can do different types of spark sql first we are just printing this data on second we'll do this uh, sql where you just count up this all data and after that we can do like what are the distinct subgroups are there and what are the count of rows by subgroup so we can then write different kind of you know that spark sql but at the end you know that here we learn about you know that uh, what is a lake house how can we uh, store data into delta format how can we you know that uh, write data into delta format how can we read data into delta format what is actually delta format and how it's storing this all the metadata into json and how it's storing this data into parquet format so this is what we have learned today and now in a next video we'll be doing again spark etl with lakehouse but that will be with apache iceberg and after that we'll be doing that with apache hoodie and then we'll do comparison of delta lake iceberg and hoodie so yeah we'll see you in our next video till then thanks